The New Frontier by Khalil Gibran. There are in the Middle East today two challenging ideas, old and new. The old ideas will vanish because they are weak and exhausted. There is in the Middle East an awakening that defies slumber. This awakening will conquer because the sun is its leader and the dawn is its army. In the fields of the Middle East, which have been a large burial ground, stand the youth of spring, calling the occupants of the sepulchres to rise and march toward the new frontiers. When the spring sings its hymns, the dead of the winter rise, shed their shrouds, and march forward. There is, on the horizon of the Middle East, a new awakening. It is growing and expanding. It is reaching and engulfing all sensitive, intelligent souls. It is penetrating and gaining all the sympathy of noble hearts. The Middle East today has two masters. One is deciding, ordering, being obeyed, but he is at the point of death. But the other one is silent in his conformity to law and order, calmly awaiting justice. He is a powerful giant who knows his own strength, confident in his existence, and a believer in his destiny. There are today in the Middle East two men, one of the past and one of the future. Which one are you? Come close. Let me look at you and let me be assured by your appearance and your conduct if you are one of those coming into the light or going into the darkness. Come and tell me who and what are you? Are you a politician asking what your country can do for you? Or a zealous one asking what you can do for your country? If you are the first, then you are a parasite. If the second, then you are an oasis in a desert. Are you a merchant, utilizing the need of society for the necessities of life, for monopoly and exorbitant profit? Or a sincere, hard-working, and diligent man, facilitating the exchange between supply and demand? If you are the first, then you are a criminal, whether you live in a palace or a prison. If you are the second, then you are a charitable man, whether you are thanked or denounced by people. Are you a religious leader, weaving for your body a gown out of the ignorance of the people, fashioning a crown out of the simplicity of their hearts, and pretending to hate the devil merely to live upon his income? Or are you a devout and a pious man who sees in the piety of the individual the foundation for a progressive nation, who can see through a profound search in the depth of his own soul a ladder to the eternal soul that directs the world? If you are the first, then you are a heretic, a disbeliever in God even if you fast by day and pray by night. If you are the second, then you are a violet in the garden of truth, even though its fragrance is lost upon the nostrils of humanity, or whether its aroma rises into that rare air where the fragrance of flowers is preserved. Are you a newspaper man who sells his ideals and principle in the slave market, who lives on the misery of people like a buzzard which descends only upon a decaying carcass? Or are you a teacher on the platform of the city, gathering ex experience from life and presenting it to the people as sermons you have learned? If you are the first, then you are a sore and an ulcer. If you are the second, then you are a balsam and a medicine. Are you a governor who denigrates himself before those who appoint him and denigrates those whom he is to govern, who never raises a hand unless it is to reach into pockets, and does not take a step unless it is for greed? Or are you a faithful servant, who serves only the welfare of the people? If you are the first, then you are as a tear in the threshing floor of the nations. And if the second, 
then you are a blessing upon its granaries. Are you a husband who allows for himself what he disallows for his wife, living in abandonment with the key of her prison in his boots, gorging himself with his favorite food while she sits by herself before an empty dish? Or are you her companion, taking no action except hand in hand, nor doing anything unless she gives her thoughts and opinions, and sharing with her your happiness and success? If you are the first, then you are a remnant of a tribe which, still dressing in the skins of animals, vanished long before leaving the caves. And if you are the second, then you are a leader in a nation moving in the dawn toward the light of justice and wisdom. Are you a searching writer, full of self-admiration, keeping his head in the valley of a dusty past, where the ages discarded the remnant of its clothes and useless ideas? Or are you a clear thinker, examining what is good and useful for society, and spending your life in building what is useful and destroying what is harmful? If you are the first, then you are feeble and stupid. And if you are the second, then you are bread for the hungry and water for the thirsty. Are you a poet who plays the tambourine at the doors of emirs, or the one who throws the flowers during weddings and who walks in procession with a sponge full of warm water in his mouth, a sponge to be pressed by his tongue and lips as soon as he reaches the cemetery? Or have you a gift which God has placed in your hands on which to play heavenly melodies which draw our hearts toward the beautiful in life? If you are the first, then you are a juggler who evokes in our soul that which is contrary to what you intend. If you are the second, then you are love in our hearts and a vision in our minds. In the Middle East, there are two processions. One procession is of old people, walling with their bent backs, supported with bent canes. They are out of breath, though their path is downhill. The other is a procession of young men, running as if on winged feet, and jubilant, as with musical strings in their throats, surmounting obstacles as if they were magnets drawing them up on the mountainside, and magic enchanting their hearts. Which are you, and in which procession do you move? Ask yourself, and meditate in the still of the night. Find if you are a slave of yesterday, or free for the morrow. I tell you that the children of yesteryears are walking in the funeral of the era that they created for themselves. They are pulling a rotted rope that might break soon and cause them to drop into a forgotten abyss. I say that they are living in homes with weak foundations, as the storm blows, and it is about to blow. Their homes will fall upon their heads and thus become their tombs. I say that all their thoughts, their sayings, their quarrels, their compositions, their books, and all their work are nothing but chains dragging them because they are too weak to pull the load. But the children of tomorrow are the ones called by life and they follow it with steady steps and heads high. They are the dawn of new frontiers. No smoke will veil their eyes, and no jingle of chains will drown out their voices. They are few in numbers, but the difference is as between a grain of wheat and a stack of hay. No one knows them, but they know each other. They are like the summits, which can see or hear each other, not like the caves which cannot hear or see. They are the seed dropped by the hand of God in the field, breaking through its pod and waving its sapling leaves before the face of the sun. It shall grow into a mighty tree, its root in the heart of the earth, and its branches high in the sky.